Hey everybody, so this video is a detailed look into how I constructed the tabletop of the recent trestle table build that I did. I also show how to attach the tabletop to the base in a really cool method that doesn't use any metal fasteners, screws, or any other kind of hardware. Along with this video are several other videos in this trestle table build series. There's one that covers the base in detail, one covering proper breadboard ends, there's a full fun montage of the whole build, and there's also one how I dimension these really large boards without a joiner. I won't get into much detail here because of that other video, but basically I'm shimming and securing these large 8 quarter oak boards to a 2x10 that I know is flat and then I run them through a planer. Doing this will flatten one face of the oak board for me, then I'll remove the 2x10 and run the oak through the planer with the other side up, resulting in a nice flat board. Once all of my boards are flat, I'll cut them to my desired length. Because these boards are so big and heavy, I just use a circular saw. Before I can glue these boards into a tabletop, I need all the edges to be straight and square. You can use a joiner to flatten the edge, or if you don't have one, hopefully you have a long hand plane. I secure the board to my workbench and remove all the rough saw marks. I use my eye and a square to check for flatness and squareness as I plane. Once I flatten one edge with the hand plane, I can run the board through the table saw to my desired width. I keep the flattened face against my fence, which will ensure the other edge is straight, flat, and a perfect 90 degrees. Then, after I lay all my boards together and choose the orientation and position of each board, I make marks for biscuits along the two connecting edges of two adjacent boards, about every foot or so. Then I use my biscuit joiner to cut where I made those marks. I add glue to the edge of each board getting glued up, add my biscuits, and clamp the boards together. The biscuits are really only used to help with aligning the boards and preventing them from sliding around when clamping. You can also use dominoes or dowels to accomplish the same thing. I only glue two or three boards at a time. Trying to glue all of them at once would be very difficult and you would likely end up in a lot of trouble. After I have my two groups of boards glued together, I can glue those pieces to form my top. It's really important to add clamps on both sides of a large panel like this to prevent any kind of bowing or cupping. You can see how the boards on the top are really nice and even and the entire top is nice and flat. <laughs> hey, what's... watch out. Next, I will lay out and cut the breadboard ends for this top. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these because I have that full separate video on how to cut breadboard ends. In that video, I use hand tools on one side and power tools on the other. It's a really cool video, so make sure you check that out. There'll be a link to that here at the top of the screen as well as down in the description. Also down in the description, you'll find a link to the full detailed plans I made for this table. And because I often get asked what tools I use, I have a link down in the description to my website where I've listed all my favorite tools and the ones that I use and recommend.
After I cut the tongue and tenons on the table, I will begin cutting the groove and mortises into the breadboard end piece. Once the mortises are cut, I will drill a hole intersecting each mortise. I will then dry fit the breadboard end onto the table and take a brad point bit and make a mark on each tenon. Then using an awl, I'll move that mark a sixteenth of an inch closer to the shoulder on each tenon and drill a hole in that spot. This causes the holes to be offset and causes the joint to be pulled tight together when a dowel is pounded into that hole. The outside holes are elongated to allow for wood movement. Then I simply attach the breadboard end to the tabletop by pounding in the dowels. Now that I'm finished with that, I can work on my method for attaching the tabletop to the base. I wanted to attach the top to the base without using screws or metal hardware, and I came up with this method after seeing a picture of a George Nakashima table, where I think he does something similar, but I really can't tell. So here's what I came up with. With the top and base flipped over, I cut three blocks for each side, a center block and two outer blocks. They are the same thickness as the upper support of my base. I clamp the blocks in place and push a half inch brad point drill bit through the holes that I previously made in my upper support to make a mark on the blocks. Then, just as with draw boring, I will move that mark that I just made around a sixteenth of an inch towards the face that will be glued. The outside blocks have one hole and the center block has two holes. I'll drill my half inch holes at these new marks. I elongate the outside holes to allow for seasonal wood movement. Once my blocks are made, I can glue them to the bottom side of the tabletop. I leave the base in place so that I can get them glued in the exact right position. I use wax paper between the base and the blocks to prevent the base from accidentally getting glued to the top. If you really want to get fancy, you could cut some sort of sliding key dovetails or something like that, but this long grain to long grain glue joint will be extremely strong and I'm very confident in it. The wood around it would actually break before the glue does. I clamp the blocks to the outside of the base so that they will always be nice and snug, and then I clamp them down to the tabletop until the glue dries. The center block is glued to the inside of the base, again, this will just help keep everything perfectly aligned and really nice and snug.
After the glue dries, I add a coat of General Finishes Brown Mahogany Gel Stain, followed by several coats of General Finishes Armor Seal. This made for a really nice finish and I was really happy with the result. Now for the cool part, attaching the top to the base. I flip the base and top back right side up and then slide the top onto the base. Because of the way I glued the blocks to the top, everything fits really nice and snug. You can see here how the center block is on the inside of the other leg's top support. Again, these holes are not elongated like the outside blocks, so I slide the top over until they line up perfectly. Here's a couple shots of how those center blocks are glued just inside the upper support. Once lined up, I can drive some half inch dowels through the upper support and into the blocks. Remember, these holes are slightly offset, just like in draw boring, so when I drive the dowels in, it will pull the tabletop tight to the base. Another really cool thing about this method is that if you're ever moving, it's extremely easy to knock those dowels back out to take the top off the base. Well everyone, thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Also remember, if you want more details, check out the in-depth plans I made for this table and you can find those at the website. We'll see you all next time.